Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Unit 1, Lesson 9. And we'll be talking about the other type of matter in this video. If you remember in last night's video, we talked about substances, pure substances, elements and compounds that are always homogeneous. They always only look like one kind of matter. But in today's video, we'll be talking about mixtures, the other type of matter. And what's different about mixtures is that they can either look like one thing or they can look like more than one thing. Um, so they may be either homogene homogeneous or they may, may be heterogeneous. So in our notes, we are on page 10 and we're under type 2, mixtures. So let me get there. There we go. Um, mixtures are matter that is not pure and they're really classified based on their appearance. If it appears, if it looks that only one type of matter is present, the mixture is called homogeneous. Okay? An example of a homogeneous mixture might be like Kool-Aid or Gatorade or Powerade. Air is a homogeneous mixture. Milk is a homogeneous mixture. Uh, in fact, if you ever look at your milk container, right on the container, it'll say it's homogenized. That means they mix it to make it look like one thing. Because when milk comes out of a cow, it is not homogeneous. The fat floats on top, and the, um, the water and the sugars dissolved in the water are on the bottom. So any solution is homogeneous. Anytime you make a solution, with stuff dissolved in water, okay, so like salt water, sugar water. In other words, in a homogeneous mixture, you can't see the parts. Even though there are parts, they cannot be seen. They're either too small to be seen, like in a solution, or they blend. Um, the, if you can look at the mixture and see visible parts, then the mixture is called heterogeneous. Remember, hetero means different, right? If you are a heterosexual, you prefer someone of the opposite sex. Um, so heterogeneous means there's more than one type of matter present. Examples might be salad dressing, muddy water, Oil, oil and water, etc. Okay, where you can see the different parts. Um, there's some important information you need to know about mixtures. And when you make a mixture, for example, if you mix salt into water, there is no chemical reaction. The salt just dissolves. So we cannot say that they're chemically combined because they're not. They're physical combinations. Physical just means now they're hanging out in the same container. They are physical combinations of substances. And therefore, they are physically decomposed. In just a minute, we'll talk about some physical methods of decomposition or breaking them apart. Mixtures have a variable composition. It means you can make them more than one way. If I said to you, go make me some salt water, it really wouldn't matter how much salt and how much water you mix. There's not only one way to make salt water. Um, so unlike compounds, which there's only one way to make a compound, there's more than one way to make a mixture. They have a variable composition. Again, variable means it can change. There's more than one way to make it. Okay? Mixtures do not have formulas. They, they, are they can be represented. They cannot be represented with symbols or formulas. I don't think you have that. Okay, I do think we missed a dot. We said mixtures are physical combinations of substances. Mixtures can be made of either, we'll put the second dot here. They are made of either compounds or elements or both. But they're compounds and elements physically combined. So they're just chilling out in the same container. They do not react. The third dot mixtures have a variable composition. And then the, this is the fourth dot here. Mixtures may be either homogeneous 
or heterogeneous. And since mixtures are physically combined, they can be separated physically. That's your last step. A word about spelling separated. It is orated, not orated, like we always say it wrong. But there's a rat in the middle of separated. I'm spelling it correctly. Usually people spell it wrong. Okay, so I have some examples of some mixtures here. Um, like, for example, this is salt and pepper. Okay, salt and pepper is a heterogeneous mixture because you can see the parts. This is tap water, the middle one. Tap water is homogeneous. So even though there's water and chloride and fluoride and all types of other ions in there, probably a little bacteria, a little lead, uh, you can't see it. It only looks like one thing. So this is homogeneous. And then um, this is a salad, and salads are heterogeneous. You can see the parts. You can see the olives, the onions, the cheese, the cubes, the tomatoes, etc. Okay, heterogeneous. You can see all the parts. Okay. So there are some ways here on page 11 to separate mixtures. So these are methods of physical separation of mixtures. And we will be um, doing some of these in class. One is a demonstration and the other is kind of like a mini lab or a little activity. The one we'll be doing as a demonstration is fractional distillation. It's separation of a mixture based on boiling point. You need things with different boiling points um, in order to separate a mixture physically. So an example of something you might distill might be alcohol and water. Because alcohol boils at 80 degrees Celsius, but water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So if you take your mixture and you put it in this flask, God bless you, um, you and heat up your mixture, since alcohol has a lower boiling point, the alcohol will evaporate first. So the alcohol will turn into a gas, okay, and it will go down this tube and get cold. It's a condenser. See, it says cold water in, cold water out. And the cold water will chill the alcohol, and then it will recondense as a liquid here. So over here you'll have your alcohol. And if you keep the temperature, if you keep the temp about 80 degrees, you will minimize your water evaporating with it. So the water will stay because it has the higher boiling point, and the alcohol will evaporate and then get recondensed over here. So it's a method of purifying alcohol. It was very common. It's well, and I went to the um, the Guinness tour factory, the Guinness factory tour, and I also went to the Jameson factory tour when I was in Ireland this summer. And they both have huge distillation columns. I'll show you some pictures in class where they. Um, purify their alcohol, make it a stronger percent alcohol um, for the process. And it gets redistilled several times just to create that whatever percent or proof alcohol that they want. Okay? It was also very common during the Prohibition days. People had these in their homes because you couldn't, there, you know, nobody made alcohol, and so they do it in their houses. The problem was that alcohol is flammable. So you'd be generating, heating up alcohol in an open flame and generating alcohol vapors, as you remember from the demonstration, which is highly flammable. And so in the prohibition days, there were many explosions. But the idea is you're using a physical property, which is boiling point, of the components of the mixture in order to separate them. So the components of the mixture, they retain their individual properties. You don't make something new. Another process is filtration. Filtration is the separation of components of a mixture based on solubility, so whether or not something dissolves. And phase. Okay? So let's say we have um, sand and salt water, like we're at the ocean. A beach sounds nice right about now. And we take a scoop of that mixture, sand and salt water, and we want to separate the sand from the salt water. Well, sand does not dissolve, right? It's what we call insoluble. But the salt does dissolve. The salt is obviously dissolved in the water. 
So what we can do is filter it. And we take a funnel and we stick a piece of filter paper in there, kind of like coffee filter or whatever. You could use a paper towel if you wanted for your filter paper. And you put your mixture into your funnel. And if you put your mixture into your funnel, your solid will remain in the filter paper here. So the solid gets trapped by the paper and stays in the filter paper. And then the liquid or anything dissolved in the liquid, so I'll say liquid or aqueous, drip through. So if this was our mixture of sand and salt water, what would be down here in the filtrate would be our salt and water, right? our salt water, and what would stay up here as a solid would be our sand, okay? Very similar to if you make coffee, your coffee grounds, your solid, stays on the filter, hopefully, because it's kind of gross when it doesn't, and anything that dissolves in the, fil in the hot water drips through. Same idea with the tea bag, right? It's always the same concept. So we're separating the substances based on whether or not they dissolve in water and what phase they are in. So the solid substance will remain on the filter paper and the liquid and stuff dissolved in it will drip through, will pass through the paper. So we call that the aqueous things, right? The stuff dissolved in it. And we will be, um, I'll demonstrate some filtration for you too. It's not super exciting, but I'll demonstrate it for you. And then finally, the last one you'll be doing as a little mini activity is chromatography. And chromatography separates components of a mixture based on polarity. Okay? Now, when you use chromatography, the paper that you use is very non-polar. And typically your solvent, there's a liquid in here, it's called your mobile phase. The paper is your nonpolar stationary phase. It doesn't move. And then the liquid here is a more polar mobile phase. And so when you place the paper in the mobile phase, the water, or whatever that liquid is, starts to run up the paper. And as it does, it dissolves components of the mixture. And so you can see over here that the components that are at the top dissolve the best. They are the most polar. They dissolve the best in the liquid, in the mobile phase. And the least polar components um, are down at the bottom, okay? So we would call those the most nonpolar, okay? Those tend to be the nonpolar. They don't travel very well. They are more attracted to the paper than they are the liquid. So they hang out kind of towards the bottom. So uh, polarity, differences in polarity allow us to separate the components of a mixture. In this case, the mixture is black ink. And we'll be doing a little activity where we also can separate, using chromatography, um, some inks and dyes. Okay? So those are some common methods of separating a mixture. We can, we, the bottom line is when you're separating the components of a mixture, you use their differences in physical properties. So if you had like iron and pepper and you wanted to separate them, you could use a magnet to take out the iron because iron's magnetic but pepper isn't. Even salt and pepper. You could add water, which would dissolve the salt, and the pepper would float. So you could skim the pepper off and then evaporate the water so that you had the salt remaining. So there are many different ways to separate them. These three may be new to you, and we'll play around with these in class this week. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.